Today, I would like to deliver a gift, my gift, to the oboe community. I want to say a few things about gifts. And the first is that gifts are free. If anyone is offering you a gift, but it comes at a price, either a monetary price or with an obligation of some sort, that is not a gift. The next is that this is a piece of advice, this gift that I'm giving. And musical advice, or really any sort of advice, um, is hardly ever universal. So this piece of advice that I'm going to give might be beneficial to you. I hope it is. I hope it can be beneficial to a lot of people. But I realize that it's not going to be. So if it's not beneficial to you, forget about it. Done. If it is valuable to you, benefit from it. When we learn things in music, though, it's really easy to take a piece of good advice and take it to the extreme, especially if it's something sort of musical. This is not a particularly musical piece of advice. Um, so don't take it to the extreme. Just think about why this piece of advice is helpful to you when you're learning something, how you can alter it to make it your own, and, and think of the dangers, right? Anything on a spectrum can be taken too far. Well, a lot of things can be. So um, hopefully this piece of advice is good for you. If not, throw it out. If, if uh, it might be beneficial later, great. One of the things that is most embarrassing when we play the oboe, and there are a lot of embarrassing things, is getting water in our keys. And the reason it's so embarrassing is because like, we feel like there's nothing we can do about it. It kind of happens at the worst times. And the people around us just don't get it. Like the violinists and the violists and the cellists sitting in front of us, they're like, what is going on back there? Like, why is she blowing? Why is she making all this noise? Like what? We're playing a symphony here, you know? Um, so like people don't get it. And it's the easiest way for us to sound incompetent, right? It's Getting water in a key badly, it's worse than having a bad read. It's worse than having no technique. It's worse than not knowing how to play because all of a sudden it's really concentrated incompetence. So let's talk about gravity. Gravity is our friend. Gravity is the force that makes things fall down. So let's talk about water in the oboe. If you get water somewhere up here where we don't want it, you want it to fall down because once it falls down, to the back of the oboe, it's good, it's, it's harmless. What you don't want is for the water to continue to track down the keys at the front of the instrument. You, you notice the way I'm holding this oboe? This is not my oboe. I would never even make this video with my oboe because I'm about ready to do some things that I can't do. It causes me great pain and distress to even, even make this. But if you have your oboe like this, it's more likely that things, I, I'm gonna do it now, okay? If you have your oboe like this, I hate this. Things are gonna continue to track down it. And if you do this, I hate this. I never, ever, ever do this, ever, okay? But this is an oboe I haven't played for a long time and I'm not gonna play it in the next week. So it's okay, it's okay, I can do this. But this is terrible. Why is this terrible? Because this, takes any water that's where it's supposed to be in the instrument, even a little bit, and it makes it fall into bad places. You don't want to do this. Now, let me show you all the things people do to do this, okay? They're playing in their music stand, they're playing, and then they go and they write in their music, and they come forward like this, okay? And now they're in the bad angle, okay? This happens all the time. Don't do it, okay? People put their reed in, and they go like this. This is terrible. Don't do it. It's just like it's doing all the bad things. It's getting the water in all the bad places. It's making bad tracks. And you need to be religious about getting the track in the right place. It's even harder if you play a big instrument like an oboe de more or an English horn because they're more unwieldy, right? It's easier to turn them into because of the way that you have to put your hands to hold it. But don't, don't let it go like this. It's terrible. It's bad you need to develop a track of water because you're going to get water when you're blowing into that thing, right? You're playing for 30 minutes in a row and you don't have time to swab out or feather out during a concert or something. It's unavoidable. You're going to develop a track of water in your oboe. 
the place that you want that water to form is on the back of the instrument, right? Where there are no holes and then it doesn't bother anything. Um, what you don't want to have happen is that you develop a track of water that, uh, you know, is windy and goes into the keys. If you get water that tracks into the keys, then you're going to play for like a minute and you're going to have water in your keys already. And that is bad news. If you have water in your octave keys, I mean, that's really close to the top here, but if that track, if you're tracking into that octave key, that's really annoying AF. It sounds terrible. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can spend all day with cigarette paper at every moment, like before every solo, and it's still going to be there. So if you're getting water in your octave keys, you have to clean them. You have to learn how to clean them. That's not what this video is about. And you have to do it right away as soon as you start getting it. Not that, I mean, that day, the next day, because the more you blow into there, the more you're going to track into that area and the more disaster is going to strike down the rest of the instrument. If you have to have your oboe like this on a stand, you can do that if you're making reeds. Make sure it's dry, really dry inside. Um, but if I'm going to, if I'm practicing and see, look, I, I always go like this. If, if you see me ever sitting anywhere, it's always like this. I never sit or I'll take my hand and go this way. It's a little awkward for me because I'm right handed, but this is fine. I'll hold it with my left hand like this, uh, like this, whatever. But it's got to be, you know, so that the water, any water that's in there falls to the good place. Um, and even, even if it's like, um, you've swabbed it out. I use a swab. I know people can use a feather. I, they kind of gross me out, but maybe it's better. Don't listen to me on that one. Even if you've feathered it or swabbed it, there's still moisture in there. And especially if you're having trouble, you don't want to, you don't want this with the moisture because you don't want it going to the wrong place. So get the track going. The oboe needs to learn the track. If you get water in your keys during a concert and you're in an orchestra, don't do this. That is a noise that is more projectile than anything. It's more projectile than a trumpet, okay? It is more projectile than the oboist with the biggest tone in the world. Don't do that during a concert. I was listening to a recording of a really fancy orchestra recently, and it's like, wow, this sounds really good. And then I heard <sighs> over the top of it, and I know that sound, like I know that sound from, you know, 15 miles away. That's the sound of some oboist blowing water out of their keys. And I, I mean, I knew it wasn't the first oboes because they were getting, they were like playing. I, I mean, it, but it's like, who is doing that? Don't, don't ruin the thing. If you have water in your key, you're screwed. You should have been preventing it. Okay, what do they say? An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of treatment. I don't know what that is, but you know what I'm talking about. So if you hold your oboe the right way and you swab it out or feather it out, you know, before you go somewhere else, um, you have a chance, but once it's there, you need to not make a scene. That's really important. Don't make a scene during a concert. You can take your cigarette paper. If you're like at a last ditch effort and you have a solo, you can try to get it out. You can swab it out at the last minute, try to dry that hole out, but this isn't really going to help you. You can kind of bang it like this and try to get stuff to fall down there. I mean, that's what they teach you to do, but honestly, you've, you're already screwed. So I would work on prevention. I think prevention is far more important. When you go to swab your oboe out, uh, which is something I do pretty regularly, you need to make sure that you don't turn it to the bad angle because by the time you're about ready to swab it out, there's a lot of water in there. So if you go turn it to the bad angle, you're throwing water to all sorts of places you don't want. So this is how I do it. I turn my oboe like this, okay? So now the water may temporarily be running to the top of the instrument, which is also not ideal um, because when it, we want it going out the bell. But when it's like this, it's still running down the back, right? There's nothing, things are still falling from the key area down. So I hold my oboe like this and then I feed the swab in through here, I swab it out and then I go back to here. But I always, I always wanna keep it at this angle or you know, temporarily like this angle, but I'm not going to be swabbing it out like this. Like this is really, no, 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 because it's full of water. Now you're taking all of the water from the back and as you're swabbing it out and you're not going to get everything out of there. It's just not possible. Things are going to the bad place. Every instrument manufacturer or repair person will tell you that the best place for an instrument is in the case. Um, I 
assume they know what they're talking about. However, for me, that's not practical. I'm not going to take my oboe apart and put it in the case every time I go to do something else because that doesn't suit my lifestyle. So I swab the thing out when I'm done playing with it. Um, I mean, if I'm going to go stop for an hour or something, I'll put it away. But if I need to go to the bathroom or I need to deal with some emergency or I, I need to do something on the computer or I'm going to go make a read in the middle of my practice session, I lay it on a couch on the arm of the couch with the keys up. Okay, so I, I have this angle, kind of like the one that I play at. Um, and, and I let it sit like this, just so gravity can help me out here. If you have a, a chair, like kind of a soft chair or a couch, you can do that too. I would avoid long periods like this, you know, on a stand. It's probably okay if it's dry inside, but it concerns me. Um, and I will tell you, I don't do that personally, and I don't get water in my oboe very often. Um, I get it pretty rarely. So um, what I'm doing works for me. Maybe it works for you. If this was useful to you, if my gift to the oboe community at this moment but it was useful, you can do nothing. You can say nothing. That's it, because that's how a gift works, right? You can use it for your own benefit and enjoy. I hope that's what you do. If you think this is information that someone else might benefit from too, and you want to help them out, then you can share it. And that's kind of like you're giving them a gift if it's, if it's useful. Um, if you don't like the information, then don't listen to it. Turn it off. Um, do something else. There are lots of other things you can do on the internet. Lots of, lots of ways to waste your time on the internet. So, so go do some of that. Um, what I don't want to hear from you is about Marcel Tabuteau. This doesn't have anything to do with Marcel Tabuteau. I don't want to hear from you about what my responsibility to the Philadelphia tradition is. I especially don't want to hear from you about that if you are older than I am and male and don't have a career and want to mansplain to me, I really don't want to hear from you. Um, I will delete that if that comes in a personal message type thing. And if it comes publicly, I will make fun of it. 